All right, Gunnar, we're recording. Gunnar, were you eaten by a velociraptor? <laughs> yeah, I am. Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Call. Uh, we had a lot of stuff on the agenda this week, so we'll get right to it. I draw your attention to line 85 where there's blog posts, press, and weekly updates for you to consume asynchronously. On line 99, I'd like to invite anybody who's new on this call, anybody who's joining us for the first time, press star 7 and say hello. Anybody want to say hello who's just here for the first time? Is uh, Delta on the call? Uh, that would be Deetha on the call. Is, is Deetha on the call? <laughs> Star 7 to unmute. Excellent. How about Dan Wigglesworth? Is Dan Wigglesworth on the call? <laughs> oh. Excellent. Well, we welcome you both in virtual abstentia. Good to have you in the house uh, in one <laughs> form or another. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's move on down to line 107 and keep this momentum momenting. Uh, summer Code Party update including a peer assist. We are at the hump point of the Summer Code Party and we want to finish strong and crazy fun. So Ben, Simon, Matt T, Michelle T, please collectively hit star 7 and talk to us about SCP. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. No, kidding. All right, great. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so there are a few things here. Um, we are at about the midway point. We're actually a little bit past the midway point. Um, actually, we're, we're fully past the midway point. We're at the two-thirds point. Um, and uh, we've got a month left. So we need to finish strong here on the summer code party. Um, so as of Friday, we've had more than 600 events, more than 4,200 participants in, more than, in, in at least 77 countries, um, which is uh, pretty darn impressive, so kudos to you all for that. Um, and what we're now uh, thinking about is ways to sort of spice up the final month and also a uh, way to make sure we go out with a bang um, in our final weekend. Um, and so to that end, uh, one of the, 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 to the spice up the final month end, uh, Michelle Thorne has a post on line 123 about themed parties, the ways to take some of the you know, ending you know, things you're doing this summer, going to the beach, going to whatever, uh, and holidays and such, as, as that, the idea is to sort of take that and, and work a, a quick little kitchen table event around it, um, which would be a fun way to do something that's a little bit different. Um, and then the big thing is that we're building for, um, just as we had the opening global weekend of code, um, we want to have a sort of final weekend of something or other, uh, and that gets to the peer assist question. Um, but the basic idea is to do a big weekend with lots of sort of show and tell and celebration of the summer, um, along with some continued making and, and project completion and the like. Um, so the, there's a wiki linked on page on line 128 right now that we started. Um, it has the basic outline for the weekend and um, the basic idea for one of these events would be to sort of start out with some sort of um, you know, video or webinar piece that uh, we will be producing over the next month as a sort of wrap up of the summer um, to get everyone psyched up. Uh, and then have people in the room share what they've made with each other um, and potentially and we are sort of working on figuring out a virtual way for that to happen um, with people. So you're sharing with not just people in the room. Um, and then I sort of go forth and do some projects. Uh, ending piece. Uh, and so uh, with that, I don't know if there's a, there's a list right now of some events that are currently planned, started on, on line 130. Um, and so if you're already planning something, do please add it there. Um, we'll want to get those up in the webmaker.org events calendar and stuff uh, as well, um, though that doesn't have to happen today. Um, and uh, with, with that, I think maybe I'll kick it to Matt, if that works for you, to sure. talk about um, naming and such. Yeah, sure. So um, under the peer assist item in line 140, 
as Ben mentioned, there's really two questions. Um, and both of them are around how do we tell the sum summer code party finale story uh, better. So uh, as Ben mentioned in my blog post that's in um, uh, line 115, I've started doing some thinking about that. But two questions kind of came out of it for us. One was, what's a, a better name for it? So if you look at that Moz Party Final Weekend wiki that Ben was just talking about, you know, right now it says Summer Code Party 2012 Final Weekend Show and Tell. I think we can do better than that. Uh, and maybe something a little shorter and sort of more memorable and more telegraphic. Um, so yeah, we're looking for some ideas and there's already lots ha taking shape on the pad. Um, but the second one is in line 158. What do we need to do to make that wiki better? So Ben's done a great job of, of starting us off with a, um, a solid first draft, but we're looking for specific suggestions on what we need to do to um, make the next iteration better. So if we think of that page as like a one-stop source of here's what's going to happen September 22nd and 23rd, and here's how to get involved in it, what do we need to add to that page or what should we do better to tell that story better? Um, so I don't know if people have, there's lots happening already on the PAD, which is great. I don't know if anybody has some kind of high level thoughts they want to share voice wise to kind of start us off on those things. Sounds like people so far, people like summer code share. Maybe people can plus one if they think that's a good idea. And also some interest in the final countdown because of the opportunity to use 80s style uh, Euro pop. <laughs> <laughs> well, if nobody has thoughts to share voice-wise, I guess, you know, the other question that just came out of this um, for me as, as I was working with Ben and Michelle to kind of um, write this up is, you know, what, what do we see as a group as our main goals for that closing weekend? You know, we, we've talked a bit about two, like one is we want to give people an opportunity to share what they made and learned over the summer. And the other thing we've said is, you know, we want to have a discussion or invite people to have a discussion about what comes next. Where do we take this whole web maker thing next? What, what are we going to do summer code party again? If so, how do we do it better? But I'm just wondering if, are there other goals and can we unpack those a bit? Hey, Matt. What does um, success look like? Hey, Matt. Can you hey. hear me? Um, yeah, so hey, it's Doug. So um, I'm thinking that uh, I've said this before. Like um, a lot more people are likely to be inside in the northern hemisphere's winter, and therefore more likely to be on computers. Um, and I, for one, as a parent, know that it's harder to entertain kids in the winter than <laughs> in the summer. So um, we could kind of go for the winter code party or whatever like that. But instead of having another version of whatever what we've already done, what's going to be kind of the name? I suppose it's what you're trying to come up with. What is going to be the name for the thing which is sustainable? So the thing I put in the chat earlier is something which has kind of taken off as an independent thing in the UK, which is a teach meet. Now the obvious way of rebranding that would be like a Moz meet or something like that, where you have a structure or way of which you organize an event and anyone can run it and it's all a wiki based kind of thing. Is that the kind of thing that you're talking about? Something which lives on indefinitely and independently into the future? It, it wasn't what we started asking, but it doesn't matter because it's a great thought and question. Um, regardless. Um, but yeah, I mean, you kind of said two things there. Like, I mean, one makes me think that you're right. I mean, beginning in September, more people will be like indoors and people will be starting to, you know, get into a kind of a back to school kind of frame of mind. So I wonder if there's an opportunity for us to do some messaging and, and outreach like kind of around that takes advantage of that fact. Yeah, I think that's I think that's also something that we can think about when we're gathered a bit uh, in early September, which will can help there. Um, I think so. I, I think that there's I think there's two different things, right? There's there's the question of how we're branding the weekend, um, and I think that the idea there is not that it's the start of something evergreen, but rather that it's the start of 
or that it, it is a sort of you know not probably not quite as big of a thing that we in terms of our promotion of it as the like kickoff weekend of code was, but something along those lines. Um, but there is another question of like is there something that we want to do ongoing akin to the summer code party and how it's sort of talked about as this ongoing effort. So Ben, one one question I had is um, like if it, are there going to be opportunities for people to participate remotely in that final weekend? Like if, if uh, you don't show up at the physical event. That's as as I, as I mentioned, that's that's we're planning that, but we need to sort of figure out how that'll actually work. The idea is to have some sort of like virtual code, you know, virtual code party show and tell event, whatever, um, and we're. That's that's a topic for the all hands, basically. Okay. But yes, the the plan is to have something. I mean, one one idea in line 145 that strikes me as interesting is, um, you know, having uh, a call to action around making your own project. Like you've played with some WebMaker projects, now now make your own. Um, so that seems interesting. I don't know if anybody wants to whoever suggests that wants to say more about it, but it seems like a cool idea to think about. Yeah, this is uh, Michelle Thorne. Um, I put that in there after a good comment that Gutter made about. Um, yeah, we've had people playing with existing projects so far, but we haven't had a. I mean, it's this isn't a call that everyone will take up, um, and I know that there's probably a lot of like technical things that aren't in place for it. But and maybe it's not an immediate suggestion, but I think it is a cool idea to say you've played with it, and there are these this possibilities to create your own projects. Um, so maybe it's not <coughs> someone who's writing back to this, so <laughs> reading it as we go. But I think it could be a really interesting way. I'm sure there's some people out there who have ideas for um, creating new projects, and maybe we just need to figure out an effective way to to kind of encourage those projects to come in, and then a um, a workflow to make sure they get the support they need um, to be real projects. Well, thanks, Michelle. I, I don't know if whoever's writing kind of in reply to Michelle. I don't know if you want to speak up. Start that and then mute. Oh, hey, it's Ryan. Uh, everything I have to say is in line 146. Cool. So, I mean, in reply to um, just just quickly on Ryan's Ryan's note, this is something that um, I'd love to talk more about with others. On we've talked about the need for having kind of an like an interim like staging area, uh, even if it's just you know, a well garden wiki page where DIY projects can live um, before they get migrated onto webmaker.org if they if they make it or, you know, if they need more work and aren't quite ready for prime time yet, you know, we need a kind of a back of the mullet place for community submitted projects. Um, so I mean I'd love to dig into that, you know, deeper at, at some point because I think I think we kind of agree that we need better workflow than we have right now there. This is Gunner. I'd, I'd love to hear some of the learning folks weigh in on the notion that I think of making your own project and it seems like in some idealized world I don't normally live in, uh, there's, a, there's a correlation to a, a, a se sequence of WebMaker badges for the pieces of stuff you'd need to understand to do a project. And I don't know if that's been discussed or if that's considered a valid use case. But I'm just kind of curious because that seems to be tying to very Strategic things together if it's not forcing the issue. Hey, this is Carla. Um, uh, I'm not here right now, but if I were, I'd be saying these things. 
We are actually looking at the way that we are going through, the way projects are coming through, and Jess and I are working pretty closely on um, trying to track how things might be pushed through from a project standpoint. And we're right now we're kind of doing a workflow pathway. It's, it is a scary, scary um, Google spreadsheet right now where things will come in and then they'll get assigned to people and, um, and there will be responsibilities. And so it will be a lot more strategic in the workflow and it won't necessarily be catch as catch can. But I really love the idea of being able to have an Etherpad that is a publicly available, although the Google um, document is also public avail publicly available, it might be really great for people to be able to comment on the um, – <laughs> it might be really interesting for people to be able to comment within an Etherpad about what things they would like to see. And, and yes, Gunnar, we very much are taking it very seriously about how um, projects that are coming through might be able to be badged because ultimately our goal is to not necessarily be the, the gateway to badging, but we're, um, a con we're a one of the many conduits. And so um, there are a whole bunch of efforts I think that are ongoing right now. One is that we want to make sure that anybody can create projects. Two, we want to make sure that anybody can create badges. Three, we're looking at validation for badges. Um, four, we're looking at peer recognition of badges and peer development and peer review of each other's projects. So these things are kind of all interrelated. And as we move forward, um, we, they, uh, because they're interrelated, we're trying to make sure that we move for, forward with them in a, in a sensible way. And I'm just going to stop there and let everybody comment. Yeah, and this is Erin. I mean, I think so the first plan, um, the first set of badges I presented next week, there's one badge for creating content. Um, and we were sort of waiting for us, the sort of process to be worked out um, and get some kind of early examples to see if there's kind of new, more nuance there about sort of um, kind of stepping people through the process. Um, but we're doing a bunch of work on the the wiki side of things to sort of really scaffold um, people in creating projects. Also working on a project queue that includes like. Um, kind of interest-based types of ideas like, oh, we want a project on hip-hop or skills like uh, uh, projects to cover different skills or for different audiences um, or just different things that people want to make. And so we're trying to like kickstart it um, by giving people some ideas and then having a lot of scaffolding there and then also really supporting that well. Like um, you know, sort of watching that would be helping where we can. Um, and then as Carla mentioned, Jess and Atul have done, done a bunch of work of, about once we feel good about a project or they feel good about a project, um, how that gets um, then added sort of to our server. So there's a bunch of work going on to support it. And, um, and again, I think once we kind of see it in action, um, we might, it might make sense to have some more nuanced badges like you suggested, which would help people along the way. Cool. Nice. Gunner, I think Jess had her hand, hand up earlier. I don't know, Jess, is, did, did you have something? I did have my hand up, and most of it has already been covered by Carla and Erin. Um, I was just going to say that uh, Asul and I were hoping to present on next week's call some of our beginning thinking around an MVP that would um, show how we could potentially start to get badges integration into Symbol. So, um, Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I do have a bunch of blog posts uh, where you could start to read about that that I'll post um, in a second. But I also think that um, we are we're at like the beginning phases where we are really trying to come up with some low low fidelity contribution pathways so that people can really um, start to get some projects into into WebMaker um, as as we were talking about. So that's something that we're working on right now um, and. Um, I also hope to start to talk about that on the um, next week's call or the um, at some time in the very near future. <laughs> awesome. Cool. We'll look forward to that next week. Excellent. Well, Piero Sisters, anything else you'd like to surface on the Summer Code Party finale? Any other questions you'd like to ask or any of this great feedback you'd like to riff on before we move forward? This is, this is great stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll digest it and spit it out in some form or other, probably as a blog post. Excellent. And I will humbly request a different metaphor for future honoring of input. 
Um, webmaker, webmaker quiz, Ben Simon, as if you're not already exhausted from that last knowledge share, what are you going to tell us on line 211 about the webmaker quiz? All right. So um, this is just sort of a, a fun little engagement piece that I wanted to share with the group um, before it went live for the public. Um, and that is there's sort of a, a quick little personality quiz um, with you know, questions about wall caps and superheroes and the like. Um, and the idea is you take the fun little quiz and then you um, sign up for a free Mozilla Webmaker sticker, um, which is not yet produced, but which you can, the design for which is actually on the page on the right-hand the right -hand sidebar. Um, and then, uh, of course, if you're so inclined after signing up for a Webmaker sticker, you're provided an opportunity to um, donate to support our work. Um, and so this is a quick thing I wanted to surface for folks before it goes live. Um, there's a link in, there's a link there to the live quiz. Um, so you know it's it's live in that it's linked and and could be viewed by anyone with the link, but it's not meant for public yet. Uh, so please don't share it. Um, but do feel free to uh, play around with it if you like. And if you happen to find any anything that seems wrong, um, the the link for the QA bug is is helpfully provided as well, um, and so you can you can see if what you're spotting has already been spotted, um, if it's earlier up, and if not, uh, please do enter it and and uh, contribute to the QA. Um, uh, but yeah, that's all. Uh, I just wanted to, to flag it for folks, and um, we will be it'll be getting uh, emailed and shared and put up on the Firefox snippet and stuff over the coming uh, few weeks. So this is sort of like engagement around WebMaker prior to the end of Summer Code Party. Um, that's all I got. Right on. Thanks, Ben. And Marilyn asks in line 228, who are you sending this quiz to? Which segments of our list or is it going to everybody? It is going to everybody. Um, it will also be going to the Firefox newsletter list um, as well as Sort of uh, various social channels and such. Excellent. And how are these profiles created and sorted? The three profiles is asked in line 229. Um, I could. Uh, there's a. Actually, if you go to etherpad.mozilla.org/quiz, um, I've stepped away from my computer, so I can't write that URL into the into the etherpad. Um, that has the draft, the, the draft that all the text come from, and you, sorry, comes from. And you can see which answer is associated with which um, profile in the in the text. Very nice. Other questions, feedback. There's a lot of love for stickers. All right, Ben. Thank you so much. We'll look forward to hear how that unfolds. Very exciting. Let me turn everyone's attention to line 235 in the Etherpad, the Mozilla Ignite update. Mr. Will Barkas, and Will, as long as you've got the talking stick, tell us how the wedding planning is going as well. Over to you, Will. <laughs> Thanks, Cutter. Hey, can everybody hear me? Um, yes, indeed. I'll take those, yes. Uh, well, so actually, I will give you the first Mozilla Ignite update. Um, I actually did an update about two weeks ago. I didn't realize until just five minutes ago that Matt had Volunteer me to give another one. <laughs> um, but <laughs> thanks for um, doing it, Will. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, so yeah, in fact, it was a call when I think most folks in Canada were on vacation, so probably a lot of you didn't hear much of this. But yeah, so I apologize I didn't put links in. Thanks, Matt, for adding them on the fly here. Um, so yeah, so the so the <clears throat> Mozilla Night Challenge is a partnership with the National Science Foundation to essentially imagine and build apps from the future sort of future Internet. Um, so we're, what, it, what it actually means, is, what we're actually doing is running an app development challenge uh, over a span of about nine months. It's broken into two phases. So the first phase is a brainstorming phase where anyone out there, you know, no need to be a technologist, can share their ideas uh, on you know, what apps would have impact in their lives. And it's, it's targeted towards, you know, obviously towards areas of um, public good. So these are defined into broadly Six categories, um, but education and workforce training, healthcare, um, public safety and emergency preparedness, advanced manufacturing, clean energy, 
and transportation are the six areas. <coughs> so anyway, all that's to say is we, we are looking for the best ideas for you know what could be killer apps on th these future networks. And what do I, what do I mean by that? Um, a gigabit per second, you know, very high speed network that is programmable at layer two on the internet stack, meaning you can route packets uh, however you want across the network, and they can be whatever shape they want. And essentially, the network itself is programmable, so you can you can actually create um, you can program your network for your app, um, which we think opens up a lot of doors. So anyway, uh, I think you've all heard a lot of that before. I, I just kind of want to give a quick update, which is just that the idea phase, this brainstorming round, is ending Thursday. Um, so if you if anyone has any tweet channels that are not being uh, you know, spreading the message. There's still time to get this out. Um, I mean, the the actual submission process is very short. You you know, you give your pitch, you, you title the project, give your pitch in you know a tweet link piece. Um, you have up to 400 words to describe your solution to the project, and then you know, optional the add a napkin sketch kind of stuff. So it really is a pretty pretty low lift if you have an idea kind of kicking around. Uh, we're up to 180. Ideas submitted, um, which I, I think is a good is a good number. Um, you know, some of the other app competitions you see out there, they're just ideas that are just tweet link. You know, they'll get like seven or eight hundred app ideas, but they're not talking about. First of all, they're not asking you to give a you know, full solution to your idea and, and really flesh it out. But they're also not thinking about you know, next generation networks. I think this is something that we're seeing. Like a lot of people are having trouble getting their head around. You know, just what a gigabit per second network actually is capable of. I mean. You know, this is faster than your computer writes to its hard drive. So suddenly, the entire paradigm of computing potentially changes. Um, and so we got about 180 ideas. You know, another 30 or 50 in, in edit stage. Um, the quality is mixed, in my opinion. I think a lot of people are struggling with this idea of uh, apps that really require the technology versus just apps that would be useful now. Um, but I think that's still that's still useful in terms of identifying problems. Um, oh, some favorite ideas. Um, one idea is actually coming out of uh, in, in the advanced manufacturing realm of areas is coming out of San Leandro, just across the bay. Um, they're putting fiber around their entire city uh, right now. There are already a couple of institutions wired uh, wired up, and um, the ring is, is I think is complete actually. So this is a public-private partnership called Lit San Leandro. They actually. I actually got them in touch with this um, professor at Purdue who is working on this manufacturing um, uh, like platform basically to allow simulation, you know, large scale like supercomputer simulation of various manufacturing processes or components and how they, you know, how they stand up under stress and various things. A lot of it's actually geared more towards education than actual engineering, but it's a web portal. All the visualization and data tools are based on the web. Um, and anyway, long story short, they want to they want to pull that together and create a local sort of fab, fabulous manufacturing fab kind of platform here in the Bay Area. Um, so you know between Stanford and Berkeley or the National Labs, and what they're doing at San Leandro, which you know has a long manufacturing history, they want to do you know workforce development training and create a platform that uh, people can remotely access some of these you know 3D printing resources that may be specialized in one location. Um, uh, things like that. So let's see. Sorry, I didn't really think uh, think about this ahead of time. Like I said, I just realized five minutes ago that I was going to do this. Um, there are a lot of ideas. In fact, what I think I should do is because the thing closes on Thursday, um, if there's time for an update, I can I can pick out some of the cool ideas uh, for next week, and we can talk about them then. I think that might be actually more useful. Um, we're looking for ideas from anyone. And the hope is, I mean, there's a bunch of hopes here. One is that we we get a lot of recognition. People get excited about this. Uh, people become aware uh, that they may have a hand in building the next internet, um, which is coming down the road. Um, and this, you know, this is what Google's trying to do in Kansas City: is to sort of stimulate people's imagination, get them thinking, and building um, in those areas. So then they have the option of of saying that they do want to help build it, um, which. Is going to be a small fraction of the cases, obviously, and and I think, you know, we're going to use it as a basis of some matchmaking when we see some teams uh, submitting proposals to the actual app development phase, uh, which is in September. So September 1 through the 20th, uh, we're opening up the next phase of the, of the app 
development challenge. So <laughs> I think I got derailed. There are two broad phases. There's brainstorming and there's actual app development over the next six months. So that is going on from September 1st to the 20th. Um, and the hope is that some of these ideas, if they're really good, if they really have, you know, say, especially if they have somebody who wants to to help with them, can be can be you know, developers and designers and, and the kind of right people to make the team um, to make the app actually work can come together with the person. But um, let's see. But it's a, but it's, you know we'll see what happens. I think the who we get sub submitting proposals into the app challenge will really shape that. What has surprised me? Uh, so I've been to a bunch of we, we've held a bunch of events called Idea Jams and uh, one access so far. And I think that the biggest thing that surprised me, especially with the idea jams, because these are people who have heard about the idea, have gotten excited enough that they want to come and kind of contribute to it and brainstorm in their domain area. So education, STEM education, for instance, I went to one yesterday. Um, I think it's really hard for people to understand the technology. And, and we've, done a, we've tried our best to say, like, don't think about what a gigabit per second means, because that's sort of this thing no one can really get their head around. It, or it's, it's just some abstract number. Um, think about being able to, to communicate really richly with someone else, no matter where they were, whether it's your doctor or your grandparent or you know, students or, or whatever. You know, so think about real-time communication um, anywhere in the world. Or think about richly interacting with really big data sets or really big computer computing resources. So I think even when you say that, it still takes a bit of thinking. Like, I mean, I, I think I've been thinking about this for the last year and a half, and it is, you know, every now and then it's still just like, wow, I, can't, I can barely believe what we could do with these, with these kinds of technologies. So anyway, that, that's probably the biggest surprise. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'll give you a better update of the actual, on the actual ideas next week. Or, or the week after, if we, if we, whatever the schedule is like. Um, and yeah, that's a quick update. Any questions? Right on. Thank you, Will. Any other questions or feedback about the Ignite Challenge? Excellent. Let us Thanks move onward to line 273 with an item that I just can't pronounce. Is it an insect from the tropics? Is it Something to do with youth organizations? I just don't know. Uh, Laura, why don't you elucidate myself and others appreciating as you real time expand the acronym? Yes, okay, so choose your own curriculum adventure. Um, Matt volunteered me to do an update as well. So I'm going to tell you some things that most of the people on the learning team are already aware of. Um, we're in the process of making the next generation of activity kits, which you might also call learning event kits or agendas in a box. <clears throat> but everything is being organized into mixable, matchable, hackable one-pagers that support people who are spreading web making. Um, so we know that one-pagers that explain a concept or activity are pretty valuable, and we also know that they're all over the web. Um, but there's a, quite a large variety in terms of length and quality. So our one pagers are really specific to web making events and they streamline the use of our tools and content for people that are running those events. Um, we're working on four kits right now. Uh, I would say that the first one is argu arguably the most important. Um, this one is the Create Your Own Curriculum Adventure Kit. And it's a hackable template that guides a person through creating their own curriculum, um, helps them sort of figure out what their learning objectives, objectives actually are, how to create activities that help people learn those objectives, how to assess those activities, how to assess the learning, stuff like that. Um, and then the other three kits follow exactly the same template and create baseline, uh, baseline curriculum for each of the WebMaker tools. So for now, um, we're following the Mullet principle, and kit components uh, will be downloadable, living in wiki pages. Um, but in the future, we'd really like to um, think about and talk about and figure out an interactive version, um, maybe something that allows people to pick and choose based on skills or activities that they want to do, levels based on the tool, um, and then sort of compile the resources that are available for those things into individualized, personalized kits. Um, and the blog post that I wrote was sort of thinking about how this ties to contribution. 
Um, I think that writing a one-pager about something you did at an event is actually really easy. And it doesn't matter whether you ran a session or participated in a session. You just write down what you liked, um, what you actually did step by step. Um, so kind of like making a DIY for events. And writing a one pager about a process or a concept it really forces you to be concise and clear. And that kind of helps um, other people that are accessing those one pagers um, learn using like really clear and concise content. Um, so, yeah, uh, I also think that uh, people that want to contribute interest have a one pager and then just hack it to fit with their interest and then feed it back into the community. So that's the, the basic idea. There's um, some blog posts on both Chloe's uh, Tumblr and on my site. Um, there's Flickr photos uh, floating around, and that's something that we're talking about um, a lot on the learning group calls. Any questions? Hey, Laura, it's Matt. Th thanks for doing Hi. that. I, oh. I, part of why I <laughs> volunteered you is I, I think these these one pagers. Um, like the ones in your blog post in, in line 275. Um, like I think those are a really great model that I'd love to kind of a, a, adapt and use for like driving contribution and um, communications and engagement stuff. Um, so thanks for doing them. I think they're great. But I guess I also just wanted to kind of call them out as a model that maybe um, you know other other groups might be interested in in following. Okay. <laughs> and is, are they available in a, in a format that like a um, that we can sort of download download and like and repurpose? Um, so actually, the the stuff on my blog those are really just um, prototypes, and we're actually going to have a quote unquote real designer <laughs> do some design um, around them. So um, that's not happening just yet. I mean, I, I can make you a format and send it to you, but it's currently just living in like an Illustrator file. So. Cool. That's cool. We can coordinate with Chris and, and others. Thanks, Laura. Yep. So some other questions have popped up. <coughs> uh, line 288, 289, Laura. So will this be a PDF inside Facebook? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I was actually thinking about just using Facebook notes, you know, and close it up as much as possible. And also, you know, basically give Facebook the creative rights to everything so that they can close it down. Great idea. Yeah, I would, I would certainly recommend you dual license with Weebly as well. But yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, would contributors be expected to only come up with the text or full page layout including graphics? Um, can you guys hear me or no? Yes. Oh, hey, hello. Yeah. Oh. Hi. Okay. This is Chloe. So uh, just wanted to give a little bit of the context and answer uh, some of these like, questions about PDF and so forth. So um, as you all know, yeah, the context for this is you know, uh, also helping people kind of integrate their own interest with these activities kits, with activity kits. Uh, but more so, um, we actually want to move away from the PDF format. So what you will see now looks very much like PDF-like. Um, but what we actually want to do is create uh, you know, editable wikis and some interactive version for the future where people will take what, what uh, we develop as a curriculum and hack it and create their own. Um, so I just wanted to give a little bit of that big picture. And if you click on, um, if you click on the blog post that I have uh, posted on line 281, uh, you might see a little bit of how we imagine that as well as the, the, the big picture for the curriculum, the, the, the way we want to design curriculum. I use backwards design. Um, and, and integrate it into what people really want to teach within their audiences. So, sorry, that's just what I wanted to uh, say just to help uh, answer some of the questions. Yeah, and to answer the, um, the question on line 290, I think that we um, as a community are really welcoming of any type of contribution. And if that is you know, just the text, then great. You know, we'll find somebody else to contribute the graphics. If it's just graphics, great. We'll find somebody else to you know, find text that fits with those graphics. Um, but the, the first kit is a hackable template. So, so um, that one sort of guides you through actually putting together the, the curriculum. And, and in terms of like text and 
graphics. I think that this, is, this ties into the larger question of contribution as a whole. Um, there are a lot of people that want to co uh, contribute to open source projects and they are not coders and so they think that they can, can't and that is really just not true. So it is sort of about you know, making it clear to people that any type of contribution you know, that is web makey and fits with what we are doing is welcomed and encouraged. Very cool. Thank you, Laura. All right. Any other thoughts on this provocative good idea? All right. Laura, you're getting some note and comment love on lines 284 downward. Amazing video. All kinds of good feedback. Right on. Well, thank you, and keep us posted on that. Super exciting, and I agree with Matt. It is a nice unit of distribution, that one pager critter. Line 297, Mozilla Festival. Michelle Thorne has a registration update. Does it have six or seven digits in the number, Michelle? Well, we've had to move to the O2 Arena next door to accommodate the throngs of people who have like, knocked down the door. Um, no, we're doing really good on numbers, and I actually just wanted to say during the course of this call, we had three more registrations come in. So it's, it's definitely exciting. Um, and Ross showed me a sneak preview of the website stuff, and him and Andrew and Chris with the designs have been doing some cool stuff too. So you will soon get to see the website. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to give a shout out um, to the Helping Spread the Word cause. And um, if there's people you know who should definitely come to MozFest, be sure that they know where to find the registration link and that they've got the date saved in their calendar. I've put three draft tweets. Um, starting on line 06, if you are a tweeter or any other form of social networker and want to, to share those links. And um, every little bit helps, and we are really looking forward to November. You will be hearing from me often about this topic. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. And great job. I think it is important to talk about year-on-year -year progress. And we didn't even have registration open until August 26th last year, so it's super excited to already be in three digits on registration. So congratulations on that. Um, there's a question in line 314. Is there any need to register for MozFest being a Mozillian? I'll say, oh yeah, and then invite Michelle to elaborate. I'm star subbing myself. So um, I guess I would ask what kind of Mozillian? So there's different um, versions of ways to get involved. If you are a, um, a volunteer Mozillian, you can also sign up to volunteer for the festival. I'll add the link on the Etherpad in one second. That gives you free access to the festival. You will have to work a little bit, but um, we definitely welcome um, your contribution as a volunteer at the festival. You can also um, be qualified for um, travel costs to London if you propose a session for the festival and it is accepted. So I'll add a link for the session submission process. And if you are a staffer or um, I think staffer, well, and Remo also has its own um, application process which is going live today, which I can also add the link to if you are Remo. So I guess the question is what kind of Mozillian are you? And I will give you the proper link for um, registering or otherwise signing up. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, Michelle, I think some of those sample tweets that you included in the pad got accidentally deleted. So I don't know if you could paste those back in. And there they are. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Copy paste the technology that never gets old. All right, any other feedback for Michelle? I just want to thank uh, Deetha on line 327 for waving in, uh, in a very nice fuchsia. And then she gets some, uh, she or he, is Deetha she or he? How's that for a forthright question? Hi. Hey, he. he. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, got some waves back in purple and green. 
Okay, and I'm getting more pronunciation coaching on line 329. It's just deep. There is no trailing vowel. So my apologies for continuing to butcher nomenclature. So Deeth, welcome. You, Thank you. you, you are, it's good to have you here. Do you want to say a few words? Tell us about yourselves. Like, what, what led you to this crazy posse of people? <laughs> well, um, I've been following Mozilla since the very beginning and um, using the technology and working on open source. I'm very interested in, in the, uh, the whole webmaker aspect of what Mozilla does because I, I have a project called Water Bear, which is about teaching kids to code JavaScript. Um, very, much, it's very much in the same sense as uh, Scratch. So it's a drag and drop programming. And, but except that uh, it's all web-based. Very nice. And do you just want to say a little bit about what you'll be working on here in the Mozilla arena? Oh, I'm working on col the Collusion plugin. And, Excellent. Um, yeah, just getting up to speed with everything. Right on. And if I can ask a personal question, do you enable the Do Not Track feature of your Firefox browser? I do. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deep, welcome. Great to have you on the team. Any other bits of business before we adjourn this call a tad early? Matt, anything else queued up inside your big brain to let the peeps know about? Uh, I don't think so, Gunnar. I think, I think that's about it. Excellent. Well, I want to thank everybody for a super rich call this week. Very exciting to see so much activity in the middle of August when we're at the beach you know, pre-screening pre themselves for all kinds of skin damage. Hope you all have a great, great week, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you same time next week on this same channel for the next Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Have a great day slash evening, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.